Hey everyone, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my mid-year book freakout tag. I'm already freaking out that it's the end of June and that we only got one more month left before I have to start back to school with my kids. So, yeah, freaking out. But I'm also freaking out. No, well, no, I'm not freaking out about books because I've managed to read 70 books so far this year, so... Am I freaking out about my Goodreads goal? No, because I can take a couple months off from reading and still be ahead. But anyways, let's just get on to my third year doing this tag. So, I have been doing BookTube since 2000... Well, no. I have been doing YouTube since 2017. And I've done... Uh, 2018 and 2019, or 2019, 2020. I didn't do it in 2018 because I didn't become an official booktube channel until after the summer of 2018. So let's get on to the questions. Question number one: Best book you've read so far this year, and that has to be a book I read last month, and that is House of Rougeau by Jenny Jekyll. This is uh, about a slave, or two slaves, a Beji and a Dunby, and their descendants throughout time, and how they get on with the world, and how they live their lives, and it's got, um, they break barriers, it's talks about Jim Crow, uh, it's got LGBTQ rep, and it's just great. I absolutely loved it. I loved every single character and their story, and there's a sequel coming out next month about another one of the family members who is obsessed, not obsessed, but who becomes a famous piano player, and I'm just, I'm ready for it. So, if you have not picked this up, highly recommend. This is my ARC copy that I got in 2018, and I just read it this year, and I'm kicking myself that I waited so long to read it. I really want to reread it, because I just love the Rougeau family. I do. I love every single character. I love a Beji. I love a Dunby. And yes. Highly recommend. 5 out of 5. 10 out of 10. 20 out of 20. 50 out of 50. Highly recommend. Number 2. Best sequel you've read so far this year. And that has to go to Wires and Nerve Volume 2 Gone Rogue. Uh, I love Scarlet and Wolf from the Lunar Chronicles. This is by Marissa Meyer, and this, like, hinges on, not hinges on, but it goes more into detail about a certain plot point at the very end of uh, Stars Above, the novella. The last story in that book is my absolute favorite, the about Scarlet and Wolf, and it goes more, this comic series no yeah the first one it shows him thinking about the thing and then uh and this installment it shows him actually having an item and scarlet finding it and it's just i love scarlet and wolf and it's just the best in my eyes because you can't you don't understand why wolf would do this and why Marissa Meyer would suddenly veer off the path that it, there's chosen to be and how does it ve uh, like swerve back and it's just great. I was pissed for the longest time while reading this and I just read through it instantly like very quickly to get to why and like there's no volume 3 so it has to go back because then the story in the novella would not make sense. So, yeah. Best sequel so far this year. Graphic novel. Question number three. New release you have not read yet this year. So, I have two. And the first one is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is like Greek mythology retelling. And then the second one, I had to, got, I had to buy the Alcrate edition and it is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. I just love this cover. She's beautiful. The background, the mandala, 
and the colors are just so bold and bright and beautiful. I am attracted to beautiful covers and also I really want to know how her gold blood like see so pretty. I love green foil but I really want to know how her blood like betrays her and then I have been obsessed with Greek mythology since ever since I learned about it as a child so but I haven't read this yet because I'm still in the middle of the heroes of Olympus and I don't want to get it mixed up with this uh, so and I'm taking my sweet time picking up the house of Hades which is the fourth book in heroes of Olympus who knows how long it'll take me to pick up the blood of Olympus I think the reason why I haven't picked up this is because my expectations are so high. I've heard really great things about it and I don't want to be the one that doesn't like it. Uh, I've heard a lot about it so I know basically what happens and so I want to like forget most of what I've heard and just go into it not remembering anything so I will enjoy it more. I'm like that. I hear something, I automatically latch on to it, and when I get to that book, I'm like, oh, and then don't like it, so, but yeah. <sighs> Maybe by the end of the year, I'll pick this up, but question number four. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and I've already read this book. I got a arc, an e-arc from NetGalley, and it is Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. I cannot wait for it to release in November because it will be a reread. I'm going to buy it. I should pre-order it, but I can't wait to see if there's any changes. It's perfect the way it is, but if there's any changes, then I want a physical copy. And plus, I really want to reread it now, but I don't have my e arc anymore, which is sad. But yes. Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood, it is, a Ethiopian, it is an Ethiopian-inspired Jane Eyre retelling, and I'm obsessed. It was so great. So, highly recommend you pick it up in November, make it a Christmas present. Question number five, biggest disappointment of 2021 so far, and, hold on. Metro 2033 by Dmitry Glukowski. Uh, this is a Russian uh, this apocalyptic book. It is set within the uh, metro station or the metro tunnel throughout Russia or Moscow. And uh, it's like after World War III nuclear weapons and the pe the Russian citizens they headed for the metro uh, to get underground and now everybody's living at the tunnels and the stations and yeah I thought it was going to be like a Fallout 4 world or a Fallout world and that there was going to be zombies nothing like that uh, it's basically just the main character he's got to get from one end of the tunnel to the other end of the tunnel and he has to go through all these stations and he meets all these people that end up dying around him and I wanted to like it and the reason that I got a copy is that the game I've been wanting to play the game for the longest time the game I've watched gameplays of this um, game and it looked incredible I listened to this on audiobook and uh, some of the characters I listened to this at two point speed the highest speed and the characters were still slow talking and it was just painful I tried to read it physically but then all of the Russian names for the stations, I just could not wrap my head around. It was hard to remember what was what. And yeah, so I oh, I really wanted to like it. But I am intrigued enough to pick up the sequel, tw Metro 2034. Because I want to, I really want something gruesome 
to happen. This book wasn't gritty enough. I listened to it on audio and it had like train track sounds and like creepy ass music to go with it and it really put me in the spirit of a dystopian apocalyptic world and yeah so I like that so I ended up giving this a two I think but yeah <sighs> I'm so disappointed that this wasn't a five star read like I thought it would and the game is like out of my mind now I don't, <laughs> I don't care to play the game because I know what to expect the second book that I was disappointed in is I Am Margaret Moore by Hannah Kappen. The first half of the book was choppy and everywhere and it was just so cluttered and confusing. And then the second half is like straightforward. This is what happens. This is how the other characters live and get through it. And then this is who done it. And then just more bullshit at the end. It, it could have been like this then and I read this on e I had an e arc of this and I ended up giving this a 2 because it was not great and then at the very end of the book it tells it says that she has seen five decades worth of summers and like oh I didn't even know this was a freaking historical fiction it, it feels like it's taking place in modern day and it's not Number six, biggest surprise of the year, and that has to go to Theodora, actress, empress, whore. And this is about Queen Theodora in Turkey, or Constantinople. And it's from her time when her father gets mauled by a tiger, and then she has to become an actress with her sisters in the Hippodrome. And she becomes a prostitute, and she has a baby, and then she falls in love with this guy who's going to become a governor in Africa. And she becomes his mistress. And then she gets cheated on. And she goes into the desert to become enlightened. And then she eventually becomes queen. So I really enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, I have found out that I really like uh, like ancient fiction. Like fiction stories set in ancient times. Like Roman, Greek, e Egyptian uh I have the sequel on my TBR shelf right now. I'm looking at it, and it is The Purple Shroud by Stella Duffy. The Purple Shroud, uh, Empress and Emperor were purple. That's their color. And so, I am intrigued. I bought The Purple Shroud at Dollar Tree. And I was going to read it in February for the Buzzword Challenge, which was color. And But I then I realized that this book is a sequel and that I needed to read the first one. So, I read the first one, and loved it that's why it's, it's a big surprise because I thought I wasn't going to like it and then I can just get rid of the book I only paid a dollar for it but once again I'm dragging my feet picking up the sequel I absolutely loved it so I should pick it up soon before I forget any more character names and yeah highly recommend yeah. it, it made me research if she was an actual emperor Empress in Constantinople. So, yeah, it got me learning. Seven favorite new to you author debut or new to you as if you read a work of theirs this year, and that's what I did. A new to me author is Sarwat Tata. He wrote City of the Play God. I read this in January, and this is a Rick Riordan presents. And so it is all about Mesopotamian mythology. And my kids learned about ancient Mesopotamia this previous school year. And so this was perfect. And it talks about Gilgamesh. And this book was disgustingly amazing. I say disgusting because there's a god in here that's all about bugs and guts and goo and gore and it's just gross but it was amazing and I love the author's note at the beginning that he wrote this before COVID-19 and that he's not monetizing COVID-19 um, because a plague this god releases a plague and all the citizens of New York drop 
and they be go they go into like comas and stuff. So it's not meant to fictionalize COVID nineteen. So it was hard to read it in January when uh, vaccinations weren't rolling out quicker for people around the world and yeah um, but I did find <laughs> two new favorite characters and I'm mad that they weren't that their story wasn't more fleshed out even though they were minor characters I still wanted to know about Batty but if you are triggered easily by the current pandemic then I would suggest not picking it up which is going to be hard because if you are triggered then you will never pick this book up it is just it hits too close to home about the pandemic and COVID-19 and this awful disease but if you are not triggered then I highly suggest picking this up because you will learn about ancient history so it's like a catch-22 learn or be triggered Question number eight newest fictional crush Ben Barnes he's not fictional he's real but I'm gonna have to go with Prince Caspian and Netflix show Shadow and Bone show Darkling <laughs> the book Darkling no show Darkling yes just Ben Barnes in general so Prince Caspian he's only in two books but movie movie Caspian <laughs> so if you have not watched Shadow and Bone if you have not watched Prince Caspian or Voyage of the Dawn Treader or The Punisher Billy Russo I highly suggest <laughs> go watching those and just google Ben Barnes and just stare at him so, and then follow his Instagram because he sings he used to be in a boy band okay this is not about Ben Barnes I'm sorry so Prince Caspian I am reading all of the Chron Chronicles and Narnia books to my kids and uh, I'm reading them in publication order, so Land, Witch, and Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, Voyage of the Dawn Trader, and I think the fourth one is the Silver Chair. Yes. And so the books are in chronological order. Question number nine. Who is your new favorite character out of everything read this year? So, like I said, I've read 70 books this year, and that was very difficult. I have read some series this year so it does knock it down a little bit but I'm gonna have to go with Dina from Queen of Hearts she is the princess of hearts and I read this last month it was another favorite and uh, her brother is the Mad Hatter and she is trying to uh, learn everything there is and to be a good queen of hearts once her father croaks uh no not when her father croaks when she turns of age she'll become queen of hearts and her father is just the worst king ever he's got a temper he's got an attitude and it's all about her story of learning how to be queen and then trying to figure out what happened to her mother who's this new sister and why the black towers exist and then it's just so great I flew through this I've ordered the second book the sequel blood of wonderland it'll be here Saturday and I cannot wait and yeah I think this is <laughs> I'm going to stop myself right there because it's not what I was going to say it was. <laughs> like, oh, I think this is the first series that I really want to read back to back and will. I said that with the Mortal Instruments, uh, the Infernal Devices, the Heroes of Olympus. Who am I kidding? No one.
but yes, Dina is one of my new favorite characters because she is got an attitude, but she knows she has a lot of love and care and wants to figure out things. She wants to be a good queen for her future kingdom. So, yes. Question number 10. Book that made you happy. And that has to be Stuffed by Liz Braswell. I listened to this on audiobook. And it's about a little 11 year old boy named Clark. He has a bunch of stuffed animals. And his mom is like a total bitch. And wants to get rid of them. He, she thinks he is too old for stuffed animals. And he learns about the system. And the point system for all of his stuffed animals. And how they are an actual army that defeats shadow monsters. And... Yeah. And that protects them. And then his grandma, who I absolutely love. She's another new favorite character. I don't know why I didn't add a grandma. But anyway, she makes him a homemade stuffy called Foon. And he becomes the ultimate protector because he's like got the most points. Because he's homemade, he's got teeth, he's got the horns, and he's just full of love. And so he fights the evil king Durker. And it's just great. I loved listening to this little middle grade series. I got the second book thanks to publishers for a blog tour spot. And yeah, I can't wait to read it in September for the buzzword challenge for dark. And yeah, so if you have not picked up stuff, I highly recommend. Read it with your kids. If you like stuffed animals, it'll be great. I got my... Atlanta Braves Bear right there. And I got some other stuffies around my room <laughs> that have been childhood. And my kids have a lot. But yes. Highly recommend Stuffed. And yeah. Listen to it on audiobook because it was really cute. Number 11. Book that made you cry. And that has to go to Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed. What she goes through in Pakistan. When her parents abandon her and leave her behind and marry her off. I was just heartbroken for her. And then what she goes through with the husband. What he does. And then her getting abandoned by her new family. And then the end with the thing and her true love. And it's just, I cried my eyes out. Because it brought back so many emotions during this one particular scene. And it was just painful. And I could, I knew what she was going through. And then the ending. Uh, I give this book a 5 out of 5. It made me feel so many emotions. It made me happy. It made me laugh. It made me angry. It made me want to hurt her parents I wanted to strangle them, um, but I absolutely loved it, and I can't wait to pick up more by Aisha Saeed. Um, yeah, so I know there's a new book come that came out this year called Written in the Stars, and it's an LGBTQ that takes place in Seattle between two girls. Totally different book. Uh, so, but this is about Nayla and her journey to find freedom. And I love her. I would protect her at all freaking cost. And yes, I actually want a, another book with her in it. Um, sequel. Mainly about her relationship with her parents after. So, yes. Highly recommend. If you have not picked this up, pick it up. Question number 12. Most beautiful book you've bought in this year. I've bought a lot of beautiful books, but the number one book that is the most beautiful in my eyes, I've already talked about, and that is The Gilded Ones by Nina Forna. I'm attracted to bright colors. I'm like that bird that's attracted to bright, shiny things. And, yes, beautiful, stunning, love it. I love the green and the teal and the yellow, and I love her earrings. I love the gold in her hair. Ugh. I love her necklaces. It's just beautiful. And like I said, 
I'm gonna try the shiny thing. So, <laughs> it's shiny green, green foil. Love it. The last question, question number thirteen. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? So, <laughs> Lore by Alexandra Bracken, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston, Advancement of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Yeah. That is it for my mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye. And if you have read any of these books, let me know down in the comments. I'm out of breath.